next hour of the HRN Holiday Radiothon in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We are back on Hour 5, the Horsemanship Hour of the 4th Annual Horse Radio Network 12-hour live Holiday Radiothon by Weatherbeater. With additional support provided by Horse Lovers, Benefab, and Monty Roberts University. I am Glenda Geek, and with me in the studio in Ocala, Florida, is host of the driving radio show, Dr. Wendy Ying. And we are your MCs for the entire 12 hours. That's right, we're still here. Wendy's still here, and we are clocking along here on the Holiday Radiothon. And we're up to one of my favorite people. I talked her into a doing a show years ago, and she's never quit. And that's the Horsemanship Radio Show. And we have Monty Roberts' daughter, Debbie Laux, on. Hey, hi, Glenn. Hi, Wendy. It's good to talk to you hi. again. Thank you for coming good. back again this year. Yeah, thank you. You always twist my arm. Yes, I do. <laughs> doesn't take a whole lot of twisting, though. <laughs> no, it doesn't. This is always so much fun. This is what I look forward to. Yes, you know, uh, I had to twist your arm to do the show in the first place, but now that's that we're beyond true. that, <laughs> that's, uh, I've got to, that's true. I've got to twisting people's arms to do shows, apparently. Uh, we, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, apparently. But you know what? You wind me up. And I keep on chucking here. So it's been fun. It's been fun. Well, it's been fun having you. And, of course, the Horsemanship Radio Show is at horsemanshipradio.com. And uh, you guys talk all about horsemanship. It's so much fun. Yeah, you know, I love that. Horsemanship, what's that? Well, it's everything. We get to talk about everything. It's really fun. You do. And who do you have coming up as guests this hour? That is you. Nope, we're here. Hello, Glenn. Oh, Debbie, I'm still here. Oh, I don't know what happened to Glenn, he, but... Oh, he, you know what? He checked out on a, a storm. Are I'm you with I'm still him? here, yeah. Oh, oh you're here. here. Yep. There he goes. Okay, Hi. sorry about that. Uh, so what What? Uh, what are you... Hi, who do Glenn. You, How's it going? <laughs> you, who do you have <laughs> coming up this hour? Oh, my gosh. We have two uh, huge names. Uh, of course, Dad. Uh, I don't even know how to introduce him anymore. It's getting, you know, uh, uh, to be a long resume. But I like to say that he was uh, on the cover of Horse and Hound magazine uh, with his shirt on, which is good. And uh, <laughs> one of the one of the all time 50 greatest horsemen ever. So to me, that's like, OK, drop the mic. That's pretty good. He must have been number one. Oh, you're so sweet. I think we'll, we'll leave that for the queen as she was also on it. <laughs> and he's been on the show every year. He's the only one, I think, that's been here four years in a row. I make him. Other than yeah. Wendy and I. Uh, <laughs> Other than Wendy and yeah. I. Yeah, that's right. And your team. No, awesome team. No, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have been on since the beginning. But you know what? We love the streak. We love being invited. And we're just happy to be at such a good hour here, too. I really appreciate it. And we also have Robert Ridlin who was a very weg centric this year. I don't know if you got to meet him when you were out there, Glenn. I got to see him at the press conferences. He was kind of a busy guy. Well, he was pretty excited guy too. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll get to hear a little bit more about that. I got him for a very short amount of time because the guy is, is more of a globetrotter than dad, I think, which is pretty amazing. And if you don't Uh, recognize the name, Robert uh, Ridland, it was the U.S. uh, show jumping chef to keep and technical advisor. So yeah, we won the gold at WAG and he was pretty happy. Yeah. (laughs) He was pretty happy. Yeah. I mean, he's got a, you know, yeah, he goes back to the 76 Olympics. He's done amazing things. And I think honestly, he's one of those guys that is going on to do amazing things it kind of in the background in the industry so i definitely wanted to share him yeah i think that's going to be a lot of fun coming up uh, but in the meantime let me just do the housekeeping here at the beginning of this hour number five but i'm going to need to get some food soon wendy i don't know about you but <clears throat> um if you want to listen you can listen on the hrn app just hit the live button on your phone a search for horse radio network in the ios or android app store of course we're giving away a total of five thousand dollars in prizes we've given away probably two thousand dollars in prizes already we have wow. a bunch more terrific guests coming up uh, we've had some great guests on already and uh, we have some more coming up the rest of the day so hang with it the recorded hours jemmy is hard at work right here in the studio she is taking the recorder's hours at the end of each hour and putting them up you can find those on the horses in the morning podcast feed is where you'll find the radiothon uh, hours the recorded hours or you can go to holidayradiothon.com are you putting them on the homepage there jemmy at holidayradiothon.com 
Are you putting them on the homepage at Holiday Radiothon? Yep. Uh, so you can go to the homepage, HolidayRadiothon.com, and scroll down and listen to them right from there. We have some lines open. Jennifer's getting bored in there. So if you want to call in to win, call 435-272-1997. And now she's mad at me because she was probably eating lunch. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, what is coming up for this hour's prizes? Well, we have some great prizes. We have almost $200 in prizes that we'll give away at the end of the hour by Monty's Equus Online University, Monty Roberts Patented Dually Training Halter, and Horselovers.com. Plus, at the end of the 12 hours, we'll have the two grand prizes, the $500 prize pack from Weatherbeta and from Wintech, your choice of any Wintech saddle. Very good. Well, Debbie, I know we've talked about this before, but you don't you don't have a horse. You ride the horses that are at at the Flag is Up Farm, right? Oh, yeah. And I have girlfriends that have way too many horses, so <laughs> I, I get, I'm like that friend who you know with the, all the friends that have a boat. You know that kind of comparison. <laughs> now, tell um, us, Shy Boy has to be the most famous horse at the what? farm, right? Yeah, and it's Shy Boy's resolution that I bring. Oh, to you I was hoping that would be the case. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't set that so, up. So you're know. all clairvoyant yes. today. Wow, we're, we're doing weird. good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I wanted to share with you. He, he asked me to. You know, he is the rule of the roost around here. He owns the farm. And he, you know, uh, those extraperous uh, thoroughbreds that are goofing around and everything, he makes sure that, you know, he, he watches them come and go and tells them what to do. And his resolution is to keep Monty home more in 2019. And I'll tell you why. Not only does he miss him, but we have some great plans at Flags Up Farms to work with more American Mustangs. And he's very excited about that because usually he is our companion horse. And that's going to be our theme for the hour is company. Um, company coming is always better with the horse. And with more American Mustangs going through the property at Flag, we partnered with um, uh, things like uh, the Ride Horse Initiative and other sanctuaries and rescues. And so we actually have like a ramp up plan, one to five year plan to take in more American Mustangs. So I think that's good news. And if he could talk, he'd say that more Mustangs should come to flag. It's pretty much a spa here for Mustangs and, <laughs> and, be, <laughs> and be gentled and become adoptable to find new homes. And, uh, you know, and you know how versatile they are. They're just going to go spread all over the United States and there'll be plenty of homes. Well, let's see if we can get the man himself on. Now, he's coming to us from Germany, <clears throat> so I have to call him live here. Please do, yeah. Let's see how he, this works. Uh, yeah. He will worry, you know, that, like, this Skype we forgot thing him. throws him off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told him, it's just to stand by the phone. But, yeah, he's in Bremen, or near Bremen, Germany, at a place called Gestut Fairhof, which is uh, the stud of the Fairhof family and uh, Jakob's family. So, hopefully, we've got him. Monty, are you there? I'm here. Yay, we got you. I'm glad to get through. Hi, Dad. Oh, did you have trouble? No, no. <laughs> no, we're here. We're good. No technical Well, you're issues. eight minutes late. Oh, no. The top of the hour started at eight minutes. Lots of, you know how commercials go. Yes. But, yeah. <laughs> we have to we pay been... the sponsors, Monty. Yeah, to... that's right. Okay. Yeah, but, I, but I'm glad to have you on, and we we know that you've got some messages for us, too. I've introduced that uh, we've talked about companionship and uh, and collaboration and more Mustangs at FLAG, and uh, we wanted to hear from you. This is your fourth yeah. year, first of all, on uh, our Radiothon. Uh, is, is it? It is, and you've been on it every year. You're the only one, oh. except for me and Wendy. Uh, okay. <laughs> <after the fairs>. okay. <laughs> yeah. So we'd love All to know right. what you're doing and what you're thinking about this time of year. Well, I'm I'm here and it's uh, um, coming on December, and that means Christmas is coming, but it also means New Year's is coming. That's and right. I suppose it's a time, and you told me to be thinking about a New Year's resolution. And um, I think the way you put it was uh, talk to us about what a horse might want from us mm -hmm. in the way of a New Year's resolution. Um, is that correct? That's right. Okay. So if that's correct, I've, I've thought about it as I fly on the airplanes or I do this and that. And if I were a horse and I wanted to think about these human beings and wish that they would 
create a New Year's resolution, it would be as follows. I, a human being from the species Homo sapien, resolve that in 2019, I will do everything in my power to investigate even further all of the ways to bring a horse into a partnership without violence. I would resolve to see to it that they try to throw away their whips. I would resolve to see to it that they stop growing feet, uh, two feet long, so that uh, a horse uh, has to fly through the air or something to satisfy people. Mm -hmm. um, acid on their legs to cause them to pick them up. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the awful things that we do, the tying to a post and, and beating a horse up, uh, of mm -hmm. course, that's just off the charts. But I resolve, I would want my humans to resolve, mm -hmm. to investigate every opportunity to figure out better how to deal with us so that we become a partner, not an adversary, and in the absence of violence. That's right. That's beautiful. That's, That's beautiful. That's a wonderful, wonderful New Year's resolution. It is. Well, I, I think it is. And, you know, I want to announce to your listeners, I started to say viewers, but mm -hmm. um, your listeners, that... There, there are so many people on the face of this earth that think that you stop learning. Oh, you know, 55 or 60, that's it. I go fishing now or I go touring <laughs> or something. And I swear to you that the last three years of my life have been the learning years that have exceeded all learning years that I've had. Um, I have learned more in this last three years than probably any five years you could group together in the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And one of those areas that allowed me to learn like this certainly is the horses. But another flight animal, the, the deer, mm -hmm. um, they have taught me so much because they're a flight animal times a hundred. They're so much flightier than a horse. They're called Veridae. And the Veridae, the deer, have as their only goals in life, and I learned this from World Book Encyclopedia when I was about eight years old, <laughs> uh, to survive mm -hmm. and reproduce. Right. Those are the only goals that any flight animal can have. So if you want to survive, let's throw reproduction out for the moment. But if you want to survive, you must remain in a safe place. Right. And so joy goes up within you when you're in what you perceive to be a safe place. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a flight animal, you may perceive to be in a safe place when you're crossing the road. And it's not. That's not. <laughs> but they try to be in a safe place. Okay. And whenever there's pain, consternation, noise, that's not a safe place. Mm -hmm. So they cleave to all the things that we do that put them in a tranquil manner, mm -hmm. put them with a pulse rate that's low and low adrenaline levels. And these deer... You know, we're going to talk about companions, and I am a companion of this deer family, mm -hmm. and they find me to be a safe place. And all my professors said that no deer can be touched by a human being if it hasn't been in a cage where you can go into its bubble and touch it and then show them you're not going to hurt them. Then you can cause them to allow you to touch them. But if they mm -hmm. stay in the wild... You cannot touch them. Well, they're wrong. And this family group that I have is 40 to 60, depending on the predators. And a couple of years ago, about two years ago, I was touching eight of them for the longest time. Some of them, Kim and Crookie and Ruby One and Ruby Two, yeah. I, could, I could touch them and rub, rub them all over. 
Mm-hmm. And they loved having me there. If there was somebody with me, that was another challenge mm-hmm. because that might not be a safe place. So other people couldn't watch me that much, but we made a blind and put a camera in it. And we have some good footage of me rubbing on these deer, eight of them. Okay. Now, Joe Lowe's comes to visit with us and, and help me write the book. Mm-hmm. And Joanna Lowe's from Cardiff in Wales. And um, the first day that they saw her there, she was in the log cabin, which is near where I go with them. First day they saw her there, oh my word, they were so worked up. Who is this? Et cetera, et cetera. And then she sat on a wall there and it got better. Yeah, and they came up and they said, okay, but I don't know if she moves, I don't know. And I said, Joe, <laughs> say hello to me. And I said, say hello to me. Joe said, hello. And they went about 50 meters in one unbelievable. <laughs> and they didn't like her voice. Mm. So I told her to spend some time and start talking to him. Now, here comes the punchline. I was rubbing on eight deer. And the other deer were watching as I rubbed on the eight deer. Mm-hmm. Then they watched Joe rub all eight deer. Can you believe it? <laughs> but here mm-hmm. comes the double punchline. <laughs> Joe left to go back to Cardiff in Wales after 16 days. It took 16 days for her to rub all eight deer. Mm-hmm. And when she left and I was by myself, two days after she was gone, I rubbed 14. Mm-hmm. Now, how the heck does that happen? Well, I'll tell you how it happens. There were six of them that watched Mm -hmm. and said, you know, if it's all right for her, I guess it's all right for him to rub me. Mm -hmm. And I went from eight to 14 in two days. Wow. It's unbelievable. And now I've taken that concept to the horses and I keep telling these so-called human beings (laughs) that don't understand flight animals Mm that a buddy horse is a good way to go. Mm-hmm. And just this day, this day, today, as I'm talking to you, I had two fillies here in Germany that were so bonded that when you separated them, they just about kill you. Mm-hmm. They were just radical. They would scream in your ear and then run over the top of you and slam you with their heads. It was unbelievable. And both of them acted about the same way. Well, both Simon and I went to bed last night and we came to the barn this morning with the same idea that if we take that old Quebra Khan, a 21-year-old mm. thoroughbred retiree with a sway back. <laughs> Gelding. And we put him in the round pen and let them see him and have some a buddy. Let's see what we can do. Well, that was yesterday. And... Yesterday, when we first did it, I was driving them on the lines in the round pen with Quebra Khan on the lead with nobody holding him, just driving him around the pen Mm -hmm. and then out in the indoor arena. And today I had a rider on each one of them. Oh, wow. That's fast. That is that, fast. That is incredible. <laughs> and yeah, they were quiet. Right the they didn't scream. They oh. didn't scream. They didn't holler. And and here are universities, and I could name one. I won't name it, but university <laughs> came out with this staunch opinion. Horses cannot learn through observation. Yeah. I don't know how well, they I'm run the science. Yeah, you. how did they come to that conclusion? Yeah, the science Doesn't is every true. animal learn through observation? <laughs> I mean, Pretty much. Well, That's how people get their PhD. I, I don't know, but <laughs> I'm just <laughs> telling you that I can prove that the deer and the horses learn through observation. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a little fawn on my place, mm-hmm. and I watched a big bird fly over the top of him. And I watched him startle from the shadow on the ground Mm -hmm. and then immediately look up. Mm -hmm. And he had never been influenced by his mother, not even one day. He was a born preemie triplet, and he never had the the position to be in with his mother. 
So he couldn't learn that from his mother. But I called Cal Poly, uh, some people that I deal with there, and I told them about this, and they said, oh, no, he would have had to learn it from his mother. Well, he didn't know his mother. Mm. And no other deer was around him. He didn't learn it from that. That comes down through the DNA. Right. So there's a lot more going on than we were ever aware of. And this thing of stuck, stuffing cookies in a horse's mouth, uh, <laughs> there's, there's no blade of grass that's ever run from them, so food mm-hmm. is not a reward. Mm-hmm. For, the, for the predator animal, food is a reward. They have to stalk, kill, and devour it in order to eat it. So that's, that's essential to them. So it's a trophy. Like if we shoot the big buck and we take him around the neighborhood, we may even have somebody stuff his head and put it on the wall. Mm-hmm. He's a trophy deer. Mm -hmm. we're predators Mm -hmm. the flight animal does not consider food a trophy yeah yeah now the if you want to teach them to bite then stuff them with cookies and they'll learn to bite you because they'll just go for your food that's in your body somewhere Mm -hmm. uh because you handed it to them (laughs) but yeah in your pockets Mm -hmm. but um I'm just having so much fun, and I've never had Gestute Fairhoff go so well as it's gone this time. We had uh, uh, 12 today go, and it was a short day because they had meetings in the afternoon, but 12 today go, and it's like I've only been here two weeks. So um, they, yeah, it's all, unbelievable. they went through the starting stalls with the gate closed, trotted around the racetrack, Nobody put a foot wrong. And these are thoroughbreds right out of the field, right? This is their first. Right out of the field. Mm -hmm. Never, never handled. They didn't go to sales and all that stuff. And they're just raw thoroughbreds, 20 months old. And uh, nobody put a foot wrong. And then those two go and take their first rider today. When yesterday they were impossible screaming yeah yeah it, Talk, it, tell tell us about argentina too i you you learned an interesting thing about how some of the polo players yeah. are starting horses down there well i i have to uh, beg your pardon about this because i i've been wrong not to do it myself um <laughs> but 10 years ago adolfo cambiasso came to my place number one polo player of the world mm-hmm. and he brought his breakers with him and they saw my thing, and these guys are not stupid. They, they know that uh, at 25 years of age, you're retiring those riders down there because they, the things they do are just off the charts. Dangerous. Them to a post yeah. and all that stuff, really, really tough uh, Spanish-style breaking. Mm-hmm. And, and when they left my place, they vowed to do it my way. Mm-hmm. Well, the next time I saw them was two years ago, and they said, we found an improvement. And I thought, oh, well, here we go, you know. <laughs> and they said, we, we, we have retire an old polo pony, 1920 or something like that. And he's sound. And we retire a lot of polo ponies because they have about 6,000 in they their do. area yes. in Argentina. Mm-hmm. And um, they, they actually take about 3,000 a year into breaking. So they put every 20 gets a, a retiree and those horses go right out with the babies. And when they're three years old, they come up and the retiree goes in the round pen with them. Yeah. One at a time. Yeah. And they do join up. The first time they do join up, it's about a third of the time. Those horses are not even touched by a human being, but right. it's about a third of the time that would normally take to do it. And the horses are more tranquil. They're happier. They have less consternation right. than than any uh, of my horses have because they have a buddy with them. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to start doing it too. I think you should. <laughs> yeah, we we learn. We keep learning. So the the horses are telling us what? The horses are telling us I need to be in a safe place, and a safe place has to be somewhere where I can rely on everybody that's around me. And I don't worry about the fact that some guy's going to pull a whip out and, and sting me with it. And I don't, you know, they're not going to shoot me and eat me. Um, I'm, I'm a friend. Yeah. And, um, 
I've been thinking about this thing about making friends and how do you cause a horse to want to be with you and, you know, rubbing the horse, not patting, but rubbing the horse with your fingertips Mm -hmm. on the wither, up the neck, top of the head, between the eyes, around the eyes, and just keeping your cheek close to theirs Mm -hmm. until you feel their ears relax. Mm. And they just lower their heads and they say, I'm with a friend. Mm. And you just don't hurt them and you walk away and they'll be right there with you. Yeah. It's a safe place. It's not a cookie they're looking for. It's not the whip they're looking for. It's a safe place to be. Mm-hmm. Well, that's beautiful. We have one more minute. And I think what I'd love for you to actually add to that is, is there a place in extreme performance? Is there a place for the highest individual well, performance? Debbie, let, me, mm-hmm. let me take that one on because it's a, it's a very good question. The answer is yes, there is. And one of those things is to become a part of the advisory team for things like the FEI, um, where you make the rules. Mm-hmm. And if there are rules that are causing you to go the wrong way, ameliorate those rules until the horse becomes number one consideration in Mm -hmm. any given competition that we have. When that happens, the playing field will still be level, but you will have happier horses that will last longer, um, fewer accidents, uh, you'll have happier riders that will last longer and have fewer accidents as well. Yep. That's it. And that's where the future is, isn't it? It is. We, we do not want to ban things. I don't want to ban the Tennessee walking horse. What the hell has a Tennessee walking horse ever done wrong? Right. You can't blame any horse for anything. It's like blaming the night for being dark. So that's if a right. Tennessee walking horse is fine, you don't ban him, you fix the thing. That's it. That's it. And it's a beautiful message at Christmas, Dad. Thank you so much for okay. for coming on and sharing your heart on that. I really appreciate it. I know you've got another meeting to run to, too. And we're on to callers Thank you, here. Monty. But I'm pleased, I'm pleased to be able to recite these things to you because Wonderful. I'm so proud of what's going on. Love you. Talk Love to you, you later. Bye, Monty. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know, I got to play with Monty Steer. Remember? Yes, you did. And I got right within a foot of them. It took me hours of sitting there. So but close. They were so close. They came up to with about a foot of me, didn't they? And I'm not lying about that, am I? You saw it. No, it's true. Jennifer actually <laughs> said that was the stillest she'd ever seen you stay for so long. <laughs> sorry. That's probably true. <laughs> do you want to hear some voicemails, Debbie? I do. You, I you might be mentioned in one or two of these. Uh-oh. I'm Elaine from Weatherbeta, and you're listening to the fourth annual Horse Radio Network Holiday Radiothon. If my horse could talk... His New Year's resolution for 2019 would be to stop pooping in his automatic water. Happy holidays from all of us at Weatherbeta. Human athletes know the importance of warming up prior to exercise and cooling down after. Not only to avoid injury and aid recovery, but also to prevent the uncomfortable muscle aches and pains. So why do we often forget about our equestrian athletes? Weatherbeta has just released a brand new range to help owners offer their horses complete comfort before and after exercise to optimize performance. The new Therapy Tech range features ceramic fabric technology, which is designed to increase blood flow via infrared waves. This reflects the horse's body heat and increases circulation. This technology aids warming up muscles prior to exercise as well as assisting in recovery by reducing lactic acid buildup. Don't let your canine companions feel left out as Weatherbeta also offers a Therapy Tech dog coat, which is great for older arthritic dogs that need to keep warm this winter. To read more about this fantastic technology and products available, visit weatherbeta.com. That's weatherbeta.com. You have reached the Horse Radio Network voicemail line. Please leave your voicemail after the tone. 
Hi, I'm Ben from Horselovers.com. If my horse could talk, his New Year's resolution for 2019 would be to stop biting the farrier's butt. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us at Horselovers.com. Hey, this is Jennifer Pink, and I have my poem for radio on. There once was a podcast called Horses in the Morning, whose Christmas radio song sounds like a big deal. So this newbie auditor feels like she should contribute, but unfortunately can't rhyme a damn thing. So here's to a great long day with pri- <laughs> fun and prizes galore. Me either. That all of us horse crazy <laughs> girls win what we wish for and more. Merry Christmas, Oh, everybody. you rhymed? My mule Look. blossoms. New Year's resolution would be to keep moving around, to keep from being ridden until me, her (laughs) owner, loses that 15 pounds that somehow (laughs) came on in six months. I think there's a lot of those. Hey there, Horse Radio Network family. (laughs) This is Biz representing the Jewish contingent. And I just wanted to wish everyone out there a happy horsey holidays. have a little pony I see oh. him every day and when I try to catch him he promptly runs away <laughs> oh pony 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 I feed him lots of hay pony 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 with pony I shall play I have a little pony, he loves to jump and spin. And when he throws me on the ground, I get on once again. Oh, pony, 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 I feed him lots of hay. Pony, 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 with pony I shall play. I have a oh, little my- pony, he's cute and full of sass. I love my little pony, even if he isn't. Well, I guess I should keep this family friendly. <laughs> I feed him lots of hay. Pony, 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 with pony I shall play. Hi, y'all. This is April. And first of all, I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and a blessed new year. So this year's theme, my horse's resolution, if I had to ask Nacy, the big red mare that rules our pasture with an iron hoof, it would go something like this. (laughs) My New Year's resolution is simple. Make mom's stupid instrument of domination disappear, the dually halter. When she (laughs) halters me with the regular halter, I get to have some fun. You know, do a little dance, jig a bit, (laughs) jump around, you know, be my own hot mess of a self that everybody likes. And she chalks it up to the fact that I don't have the dually on. But then she goes and gets it and puts it on. (laughs) And I just feel like obeying, being more responsive, doing what she asks. What the heck is this? What sort of black magic is in this thing? (laughs) So I plan to make it disappear and to keep her worshiping. uh, Well, I mean, you know, loving me unconditionally. I have to make it look like bingo, the stupid gilding that gets into everything. I'll make it look like he did it. I've already achieved pasture domination, so this year, the dually halter goes. Next year, world domination. And if I have to wear that halter one more time, could you please put my name on it? I mean, really, who names their horse Monty, anyway? <laughs> Merry Christmas, y'all. Hi, this is Casey Berger. I am an HR and auditor, and this is my radiothon submission. Belgians and Mustangs and Icelandic horses... Chestnuts and Pintos and Monty Roberts' courses. Blue Rones and Shetlands all tacked up to ride. Please don't forget to mount from the left side. Blankets and heaters and helmets with liners. Ponies in harness and wearing their blinders. Saddles and bridles all decked out with glow. Won't it be fun to go ride in the snow? Tall boots and warm socks and hot cocoa after. A nice warm drink to help hide my laughter. With Glyndon, Jamie, and Jimmy, of course. Welcome to the radio network for the horse. If your horse kicks, if your back hurts, <laughs> if you get bucked off, turn up HR in Radiothon, and then it won't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everyone. It's Gemma. In response to the matter of resolutions, I don't think Arik is the one who needs them. Instead, I think that falls to me. 
I need to be more thankful that even though I can't ride Ark right now, I have the privilege of enjoying his company. I could be more patient and find joy instead of annoyance with his antics. Although, if Ark could talk, I would like to think that he would at least try to be more agreeable to Ruger, the barn cat, and chase her less. But like most resolutions, I don't think it would last long. Anyway, here's wishing everyone happy holidays and happy horsey days from Ark and I to you and your horses. This hour of voicemails has been sponsored by Horselovers.com. Horselovers.com is the world's largest online tax shop. Why? Because they have over 160,000 products. That's a lot of horse stuff. So when you need something, they have it. Everything for the English, Western, and everyday rider. Plus, shop with confidence knowing you're getting the lowest prices available. Horselovers.com is offering a special holiday discount with purchase just for you, our listeners. Spend at least $99 with Horselovers.com, enter HRN in the coupon box at checkout, and get $10 off your order instantly. This is an exclusive code just for listeners of Horse Radio Network. Enter HRN in the coupon code box at Horselovers.com. Well, thank you for all the submissions. I told you you got some. <laughs> yeah, those no, are great, you guys. That's <laughs> Weren't so they funny. good? I yeah, hurts. the Dooley one was hilarious. <laughs> That's. <laughs> That's really We're gonna good. give one of those away, so you too can give it to your horse at this Christmas uh, later in the show. That's right. That's we have right. a caller we'll that's been waiting that. for forty-three minutes. Let's take Scott. Uh, Merry Christmas, Scott. Merry Christmas to you guys too. Hi, Scott. Thanks for calling. Hello. So does your horse have a resolution? Well, I've got the same horses as Marissa does, our um, OTPB Dash and um, Arabian Task. But they told me they have a couple of other um, other resolutions that they might not have mentioned to risk. Oh, she was the one uh, that said that she wishes her horses wouldn't kick um, her. Yeah, in the yeah, I remember uh-huh. that. Yeah, no, that, that was no, that was a different one. Da- dashes, she said, was not destroying blankets, which we don't oh, believe. Yes, okay. And tasks was wanting to get into the mare field, which we do. Got it. But uh, uh, the um, the resolutions I've heard about dash dash is a flea bitten gray. And he actually wants to be Rainbow Dash in a live action My Little Pony's Friendship is Magic movie. <laughs> and Task wants to Task wants make a lot more money. Fantastic forelock <laughs> and his beautiful cheekbones on the cover of Horse Illustrated. Oh. Those are their resolutions this year. Oh, yeah. well, those are good resolutions, except for the whole on my pony thing, which you know how I feel about that. So <laughs> <laughs> I think, but then the, the, you're, you would make a lot more money that way. That's for sure. There you go. <laughs> it's a good gig true. if you can get it. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. And Merry Thanks, Christmas. Scott. You're welcome. Merry Christmas to you guys, too. And let's take Jenna here real quick, and then we'll get to your guest. Okay. Merry Christmas, Jenna. Merry Christmas, guys. Hi, Jenna. Where are you from, Jenna? I, I'm up in Hope, B.C. And where? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> BC. Oh, BC. Oh, oh, got it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I was joining. What state's that? I couldn't. I was a little slow. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> so can't do hear you hear me over my dog barking in the background? Yes. <laughs> that happens all the time and we love it. What what yeah. breed? What kind of dog do you have? Uh, she's a charcoal lab. Oh, cool. Oh. They they do like to bark when somebody calls on the phone. That's a thing. She so, chases the bears mm-hmm. off the property. Oh, good. Well, that's that's positive. <laughs> So, uh, what do you? What's your horse? Do you have a horse? And is there a resolution? Yeah, well, we've got six on the property. Um, so I went out and spoke to them all, and my thirty-year-old says that he would like to hold on to his last last remaining teeth so that he can continue <laughs> to chew his hay. Again, when we all <laughs> and my <laughs> and my yearling Demi, uh, she's going to work on getting over her fear of horse eating spray bottles this year. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a tough. They one. are dangerous. Yeah, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, so if you have any tips on that, be great upcoming we show. Do. <laughs> actually, we have at Equus Online University. I was just doing the notes for last night on it. Yeah, I, I got a, and it actually goes with our theme of companionship this this hour too. Mm-hmm. So, so check Perfect. back with that. I'll get you a day pass. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank well, you, Jenna. Thank you guys a Merry Christmas and thank you for uh, everything you do. Love the Horse Radio Network. Thank you, Merry Jenna. Christmas, Jenna. Merry Christmas. 
Bye. All right. We, you had a chance to catch up with a very busy guest. Tell us a little bit about your guest. Yes. Yeah, so our guest is Robert Ridlin, and he won numerous jumping events. Some people remember him back to the 76 Olympics. So he's been around, and he's done amazing things. He graduated from Yale, some things people might not know about him. And he has a law degree from Columbia University back in, 70, in the 70s. And since then, he's been involved in the administration of um, everything equine, uh, the sport, serving as a board member of the U.S. Equestrian Foundation. Foundation and the U.S. Equestrian Team. He's been a color analyst for televised jumping competitions. Uh, he, he's amazing, but he's also the jumping chef to keep. Uh, he's led the U.S. team to bronze medals uh, at Alltech FEI World Equestrian Games and Toronto's 2015 Pan American Games, silver medals at Rio, uh, the Olympic Games in 2016, and of course the U.S. jumping team for the FEI World Equestrian Games try on in 2018. So he is a busy guy and he's a really he's actually a really good mover and shaker in the equestrian business too. He's his business partner, RJ Brandis, is part of Blenheim Equisports out in Norco. They've just built this amazing multidiscipline sporting event. Um facility and they are an event management company that specializes putting on horse shows and things like that, like uh, World Cup finals in Vegas. Big, big doings. So I was really pleased to get him for 10 minutes. There we go. That's what I got. Thanks for calling in and, and saying hi to Horse Radio Network. That Our radiothon is on Horsemanship Radio. And uh, so we're just really excited to add your rock star power to this, <laughs> to this hour. I'm happy to do it. I don't know about the rock star part, but I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, us in the equestrian world, we take our rock stars a little differently. We <laughs> we think <laughs> we think when you win things like uh, what you did in September in Tryon and uh, – the world team jumping championship, the nation's cup. Uh, we think that's, that's pretty rock star material. <laughs> well, uh, I'll go along with that. Thank uh, you. It was a pretty unbelievable week. It was. And, and it was a year and a half in preparation with a really young team. That's a lot of pressure. Well, it is. Uh, we've been, uh, I, I've been doing this now for six years. Uh, uh it doesn't actually seem like it's been six years, but, uh, uh, that, that was one of my goals when I started, that we would uh, really open up the opportunity for the younger riders, uh, really test them under fire, the ones that were talented enough to, to do this. Uh, and it worked. Um, s- certainly going into the world championships uh, with uh, two rookies out of the four riders in the field of play was unusual to say the least. But uh, uh, as I said, they've been tested by fire uh, mm-hmm. and uh, they proved what they were worth. Well, that's great. I mean, we would love to talk to them about that too, but the, uh, the proof is in the pudding in your leadership. So what, what gave you the gumption to think that they might have it? Uh, was it, was it Aachen and Essen? I know they had some, some pretty good stuff under their belts. Well, that would take more than uh, the time that we have okay. right now <laughs> to get into that. Uh, uh, I have a, a lot of uh, tools at my disposal, aside from obviously being at the major competitions myself and my assistants. Uh, it's really like no, I mean, it's it's like uh, any other professional sport. Uh, you have a lot of eyes and ears on the ground, and uh, I actually have introduced a lot of uh, statistics and data uh, that the other coaches don't have. Uh, the, they're not available to them uh, to the same degree just because I believe in them. Uh, baseball, football, uh, our major sports have used them for a while now, uh, and there's no reason why we wouldn't. It's an objectively based uh, sport, uh, and uh, we have data that uh, uh, the Federation provides to me, and, and uh, all signs pointed that uh, it would work. I'll put it that way. Yeah. The data really points to probability and if that matches what your gut says uh well the chances are good well I, i'd like to get into that sometimes sounds like a money ball kind of kind of uh that's where it came so, from there that's we go where, okay. that's where it came from that's a lot of fun yeah it makes sense to me i think uh i think the more professional we get with all these sports the more science becomes involved in it and you know it's it's probably applies to horses as well as people am i right 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, because gonna... really what we're doing when we select a team for the Olympics or the World Championships or any of these major competitions, we're talking about a horse rider com- com- uh, you know, combination. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not just the rider. Uh, and it's not just the horse, it's the two of them together. And there's a record that goes along with it. These horses uh, uh, have been, uh, you know, going through uh, the various stages to get to, to that for some time. So uh, uh, there is data behind all of this. Uh, and on top of that, ultimately, uh, it, it's still uh, yeah, what you see, hear, and feel. And uh, uh, that, that's what it comes down to. Well, fantastic. We are so fortunate to have you in the driver's seat with all that. So I thought in this light little introduction to Robert Redland, we would talk a little bit about when do you get back in the saddle? I mean, my era, 76, just the the things that I remember about you are all in the saddle. So tell us what you're (laughs) doing to get in the saddle these days. You get to ride? No, no, no. no. I I haven't ridden in 10 years. Oh, (laughs) My competition career is, was over a, a while ago. It's for the kids now, uh, and uh, I, a I don't have time to do it. Yeah. Uh, I keep myself. Uh, I actually keep myself really fit. Um, I'm doing a lot of running. I'm about to go out in the run right now, and and okay. uh, and tennis. So uh, I stay fit. Uh, but no, no, I, I leave the the riding for the kids. So you don't own any horses now. No. Isn't no. that odd? Uh, what what I, what I do. Um, yeah. Uh, my wife, Hillary, and I, uh, we run a training business together. And so I'm her shadow when it comes to that. We just nice. actually came back from a show in Thermal. Um, and so I'm, I'm obviously quite involved, uh, but I, I, I myself, not in the saddle anymore. Well, that's incredible. Nice to have the chef, chef to keep in your in your tack room, uh, <laughs> in your training room. Uh, that's, that's great. Um, well, you know, maybe you can give me a little idea. We have a, a little contest going here since this is our radio thon that, um, maybe you can get somebody to answer for us that if your horse could talk, what would his or her New Year's resolution be? What do you think that might be from some of these kids these days? <laughs> if the horse could talk. Yeah. Hmm. What would his or her New Year's resolution be? I would say it all depends on, on who's riding. Them. Yeah, it <laughs> does. <laughs> it, it could it could run the gamut. Like uh, like maybe maybe you should uh, have your friend ride me. <laughs> yeah, right. I, he looks pretty good over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you you have a daughter who rides. Am I right? No, no. no. Um, we uh, we have a daughter and a son, both of whom used to ride. Okay. Uh, McKenna was was actually very talented. Uh, when she was younger, she's now in law school uh, wow. in Denver, um, and she was an incredibly talented rider. But uh, the competition uh, bug just really wasn't uh, the incentive for her. She she loved doing it, and she was very good at doing it. But uh, uh, the, the competition side of it wasn't for her. Our son Peyton, who's a freshman at uh, University of Washington, Seattle, also mm-hmm. was was talented, but he didn't ride nearly as long. He he rode about as long. Uh, about about a month or so. This was when he was, I don't know, five or six, wow. until uh, mom told him he had to wear a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no, I'm not doing that. And, and I think that was the career. last time he wrote. <laughs> oh, dear. Sometimes but rules he's, aren't free. He's, they're both our biggest fans. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they they watch the Nations Cups, and, and uh, Pey- Peyton even came down to uh, Rio for the Olympics oh. uh, with us. Uh, so, that they're huge fans of uh, what we do, but they don't uh, they don't ride themselves anymore. Well, good luck to them in school too. That's that's a sign of great parents, though, that you guys have uh, kept them involved and they are supportive of your of your industry. And that's uh, all we can ask for out of teenage pluses these days. Uh, millennials, we're, I think. we're so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us a little tease of the upcoming <laughs> the upcoming real interview we're going to do. And we're going to get all those insights on Tryon. And, and 2019, too, I'd really like to have a proper sit down uh, after December to talk to you about what you learned from the World Equestrian Games experience and, and that what you're taking into 2019 and yeah, no, that that sounds great. Uh, 2019, of course, is the year of the Pan American Games, and that'll be a prelude to uh, 
the Olympics in Tokyo. So everything now is, is moving forward from where we were with the world championships. And uh, I'd be happy to sit down and go into detail what we're planning to do. Well, that'll be a lot of fun. We've got some friends down in that Orange County area, so we'll have to pull together and involve food somehow. <laughs> now, now, you, now you're talking. I'll, I had to I'll go for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you, Robert Ridlin, Chef to keep for our, our winning, jumping, uh, and on to Olympics now at the U- for the U.S. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thanks, Debbie. Yes, I uh, look forward to talking to you, like, a, like, like we said, over some food and, and in great detail. We'll, do a, we'll go into that Moneyball stuff. Yeah, let's get into that Moneyball stuff. Okay. I, I don't <laughs> know if I can have that for listeners, but I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, thanks Debbie. Bye. Bye. What a nice guy, huh? Yeah, a really nice guy. I, I really look forward to the the sit down part. We're gonna do that soon. Yeah, he's done well too. He's a good organizer and that's the reason that that's the reason we won this year. <laughs> it's, it's really, yeah, it's, does smart a good guy. job of picking teams and he picked some youngsters on that team that were not he expected. Did. So he did. Yeah, so it was a chance. He took a chance. You know, if it had gone the other way, he'd have taken the criticism for it too, but that's what makes a good leader, right? Yeah, and competitor. Yeah, yep. exactly. Mm-hmm. So um, there is a drinking game already going on, Debbie, in the auditor room. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's noon. I mean, it's past noon, I guess. Um, oh, there's yeah, a drinking you're, you're game wild. that you have to drink every time a sponsor comes on that you bought a product from. I think we're going to have some really drunk people by oh, oh, about 3 o'clock. I, so, <laughs> I know their shopping yeah. skills. Yeah, they're in trouble. <laughs> Another hour, we're going to have none of them listening like anymore. something here. Like I'm like, I don't know, guys. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> and there's pictures of alcohol already, champagne oh. and mixers, and it looks like everybody... We do have our two bottles of champagne, don't we, Jemmy? We're ready. Yep. We're ready for later. For yep. <laughs> Matt already is drinking out of the bo- straight out of the bottle, so that's not good. <laughs> um, so. All right, let's do some prizes. What do you say, Wendy? All right. Our first prize is a one-year subscription to Monty's Equus Online University with access 24-7 to over 500 of Monty's videos lessons worth uh, $99.99. So, Debbie, why don't you tell us a little bit about this? That's right. Monty's added more than 525 online horse training video lessons now, and that's from instruction across the, the you know, Will Simpson, uh, Stefan Peters, Charlotte Berdahl, amazing names we have up there too, and new lessons are added every week. So there's a complete library of nonviolent partnership training um, to get great performance with your relationships and your horses. So uh, become a part of the, our mission. The, you heard it today with Dad's voice. It's his worldwide mission is to leave the world a better place for horses and for people, too. And that's by taking violence out and uh, listening to our horses. Very good. Let's well, pick a winner. Okay, so we need to pick a number between 1 and 240. 212. <laughs> 212. Kathy White. Kathy White. Congratulations, Kathy. White. Kathy. Yay, Go to MontyRobertsUniversity.com and get on there with the day pass straight away. MontyRobertsUniversity.com straight away. And then we'll get you a, a, an actual year's subscription. That'll be great. All right. Great Sounds price. good. Good job. So next up, we have, oh, another Monty product. Oh, that's yep. right. We have Dooley. the Monty Halter, the Dooley Halter. The dreaded Dooley Halter, apparently, we judging by the song. It. Right. <laughs> Every horse worries about his owner getting a Dooley Halter because then they have to actually do something right. <laughs> but so we have choice of we have choices of the sizes. Of course, we have now five sizes. The mini, and you know, to me, the mini is exactly what you need for the horse that won't load on the trailer. No, you pick it up and you carry it onto the trailer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> No, the mini is adorable because it's purple. And then there's the pony size, the small, the medium, and the draft size. And they're worth about $54. Uh, and they come with a DVD and uh, lots of training on it. So the Monty Roberts Dooley Halter is just as that um, caller and listener said. It's designed to make it easier for the horse, the handler, and the halter to work in partnership. Your horse will teach himself to come off the gentle pressure of the soft, round noseband on the halter, and uh, both forward and back, so loading on the trailer or actually backing up. Horses find the halter's comfortable sweet spot, and then they move with you to maintain it without pain, knots, or pole pressure. 
So there you go. And they really Hope do you work. Win. Scooter uses one, uh, and uh, he he would sing the same song, I believe. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but they really Scooter do work. Like to be forced. Leave it in in the tack room. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so number... we need to pick another number between one and one forty. Two forty. This is worth. The... Oh, you one and two forty. Oh, one and two forty. Oh, sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah. Two forty. Yeah. Fifty-four. The price of the halter. Fifty-four. Give me one second. Is Patty Puff? Patty Puff. Oh, that's a great name. It Patty is a great Puff. Name, isn't I know it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> that is really her name Pat. too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, one more prize. All right, our next prize is our fifty dollars gift certificate from Horselovers dot com. With uh, order over forty nine dollars worth of stuff today, and use co- coupon code Radio, and you'll get a free Mrs. Pastures Christmas cookie stocking. And if you order over ninety nine dollars and use coupon code HRN at checkout, you'll get ten dollars off instantly. Nice forty nine. Oh, shopping. Oh, forty nine. 49 is Rachel Zent. All right, Good Rachel. Good job, Rachel Good Zent. Job. I love horse lovers. Oh, you're going to have so much fun. I know. Go crazy. Go and crazy. And they're having sales today. You should get over to horselovers.com today. Use the coupon code HRN because you know you're going to spend over 99 bucks. You always do. Oh, yeah. So, okay. uh, and you'll get $10 off instantly. So definitely Unless do that right now. Unless you go to the auditor's page and start drinking. So go for it. Right. <laughs> Either <drinking>. one. Or, <laughs> or, or shop after you drink. Uh, you'll be way yeah, over $99 then. Yeah, you'll yeah. order way more. <laughs> there won't be any problem at all. So give a play, <laughs> quick plug for your show. Horsemanshipradio.com. We have it all on Horsemanship Radio. We're over a hundred and how many how many episodes are we now? 124, yeah, five, something, something like, that. like yeah. that. So uh yeah, listen to the back ones, listen to the ones that we just did on Zapata, Colorado. Those are so much fun. And we really we've had Priscilla Presley all the way, which Glenn helped me with, all the way to um you know, we always get Monty's insight there, and he knows a lot of people, so it's really yeah, fun. Yeah, there's some training stuff in there as well. So uh, you have a little bit of everything and, and get some really very good. interesting people on from all over the world, not just from the United States. No, we're very global. Yep. Please come and listen. Just like uh, Monty Roberts University is. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. Thank you, Once Bo, again, Glenn and Wendy, and all your team behind you. I'll go drinking now. All right. We're <laughs> flying through the hours Happy here. Happy drinking. Coming up next hour, we have Christy from the Certified Horsemanship Association, who has been with us once a month on Horses in the Morning for at least 25 years. And that's coming up next uh, on the Radiothon. But in the meantime, enjoy some music. We'll be right back. Oh, I forgot to remind everybody that Weather Beat a Gift Pack will be our grand prize at the end of the day, $500 worth, and a Wintech saddle. Of course, Wintech saddles are North America's favorite synthetic saddle brand. Wintech saddles have been combining world leading innovations in high tech materials and lightweight, weatherproof, and easy to care saddles since 1986. Whether you simply enjoy time together or schooling for competition, there's a model range for you. Visit wintechsaddles.com for more information on their range and to locate your nearest dealer. And there's lines open right now to call in during the trade. Transfer, uh, you can give us a call at 435 272 1997 and register to win. We have lots more to give away. <laughs> 